this is Peter here. Today I'm going to show you two super easy to use tools that are part of Luminar Neo's extension spec. I tend to use these extensions quite often, especially with images where I want to be able to correct certain flaws such as high noise or slight motion blur without having to edit for too long. Before starting this very simple and easy to follow tutorial, I'd like to just briefly mention that Luminar Neo has a special spring sale on at the moment and I will leave links to both new users and also those who already own Neo in case you want to upgrade or expand your library with more creative assets via the Luminar X membership or the Spring Creative Collection. There's a free seven day trial period and you can try out the extension spec as well. So I highly recommend you check it out and give it a go. The discount of this deal is pretty substantial. And also if you end up buying, don't forget to use my coupon code to get an extra 10% off. Once again, all the info and the affiliate links will be in the description. Also, if there are more deals in the future, I will periodically update these so you can get the best value. All right, let's jump into Luminar Neo for some editing. All right, so here we are in Luminar Neo. I created a test shots album with seven images. Let's start with some jumping spider shots. Let's select this one. We go to the edit panel and uh, use the noiseless AI extension first. Let's zoom in a little bit more to around 300% so you can see the noise levels. Not too bad, but we can do a bit better. It says use the low adjustment for this image as an advice. Let's try and see what happens. So this is before and this is after. It does a pretty good job and still retains plenty of detail, adds a little bit of extra sharpness to certain parts of the image. You can also alter these sliders and just make adjustments uh, to your liking. I think that looks really nice. And then we can also add extra sharpness. Uh, let's try with universal and middle. I mean, that looks already awesome. Super sharp, beautiful, really nice. But if you wanna just apply it to certain parts of your image, then you can do that by just uh, using the masking tool, click brush and then paint. You can change the size of the brush and start brushing in where you want to add that extra textural detail, extra sharpness. And uh, we certainly only want to apply it to the area where the eyes are. And uh, for example, the pedipalps, let's decrease the size of the brush and just brush it in here as well. And that looks instantly better. I really like that. So this is before and this is after. Wow, looks amazing. Let's go to the edit section and then just discard the edit. So this is the image before and then this one is after. Beautiful. It looks amazing. Let's go to our next image, back to the catalog and let's finish with the jumping spider shots. There is a peacock spider portrait that I took a couple of years ago and um, I think I might have already done a couple of edits here. Yeah, I have done basic editing. Let's go back to the uh, tools and uh, zoom in a little bit more and start with the noiseless again. Just the low level is going to be sufficient enough. Let's zoom in a little bit more so you can see. So this is before. There is more grain, definitely. And then after, add a bit more detail again and increase the sharpness to 60% or 60 points. And let's go to the super sharp AI tool. And um, instead of just the universal, let's try something else and use motion blur. And uh, let's go to the extreme to the high one and see what happens. I mean, it looks so much sharper, but it looks a little bit too artificial for my liking, especially at the highest level. And you can see that it actually alters the out of focus areas. For example, the size of its abdomen is significantly decreased of this uh, male peacock spider. And we certainly don't want that. And if we use just low level of motion blur, I think the um, change will be a little less uh, obvious. Come on, do your thing. I love that this 
tool is following my cursor. So before and after, that looks already much better. Let's add a bit more um, sharpness by the universal tool. There are certain parts of the image where I don't want to add extra sharpness. So once again, I'm going to just use the uh, masking tool and then apply with the brush tool and paint in only certain parts of the image. For example, here around the eye and also the calissary and paddy palps right there and then maybe move them a little bit and apply extra sharpness to this part of his legs and maybe a little bit here just a little bit and that looks pretty good that looks really nice so we can go back this is before and this is after let's go to the most problematic uh, image here this one was taken of the same species another peacock spider and this was really difficult to capture as it was about to jump off this uh, little leaf you can see that i did not nail the focus i wish it had been uh, focused right on this uh, eye but the depth of field is so super shallow and it's extremely hard uh, at times to nail the focus, especially with super quick moving subjects. Go back to the edit and then the tools and let's start with uh, some uh, super sharp and this time uh, use the high. Let's see the difference. Wow, that looks already so much better at first glance. So this is before and this is after before and after again I don't want this part to be affected so I'm gonna go to the mask brush and then erase uh, I wanna just erase this bit I think we don't need to apply anything there and here either that's better and I think that's gonna look good so yeah that looks so much better already right at the end of its uh, abdomen you can see the difference that looks so cool actually I'm gonna just um, use the erase tool and then just erase this pad make it look a little bit more natural a side effect thing around it that's better I think so before and then after before after all right so this was our last jumping spider shot let's do some bird shots and i want to start actually with this uh, image the lighting conditions were quite suboptimal you can see that um, the light was quite harsh and coming from the top i think i have already applied some editing to this particular image yeah i have already done the noiseless and the super sharp let's discard everything and um, you can see that this was the image before and uh, after I have applied both the super sharp and the noiseless this is what we've got uh, I did some manual erasing once again and only applied the motion blur reduction to these wing tips at the bottom and I think the end result speaks for itself it looks so much better so this is before and then this is after so much more definition in those wing tips and also more detail in the eye and the beak all right so this is our fourth image let's uh, have a look at this uh, long billed corella that was foraging on the ground back to the tools and uh, the noise levels are fine i think we can still uh, make it look a little bit better by applying just the low and then actually decrease the luminosity denoise to around 70 percent and think that looks really nice so this is before and this is after just a slight change and then go to the super sharp ai tool and i want to do manual brush uh, universal and let's do middle and then we hop to the masking tool hit brush once again paint just change the size of the brush and um, let's just brush it in right here 
uh, around the eyes because that is the only place and also somewhere here yeah, a little bit more here on these feathers where i want to introduce a little bit more sharpness so this is before and this is after before and after i think that looks really nice still quite natural as well beautiful let's go to our second last shot this is a noisy miner that was printing itself and for a brief moment it uh, extended its uh, wings and kind of looked like a butterfly or angel wings as some people uh, said the noise levels are quite high in this image you can see there's plenty of um, grain and uh, we want to get rid of that so once again go to the edit panel and then the tools and noiseless and it says use the high adjustment for this image which we're gonna do all right so it has done a pretty good job already before and after before and after now we're gonna go to the uh, super sharp ai and uh, let's do medium this time wow it looks so much nicer already i actually think that uh applying the lower level would be more than enough for this so this is before and this is after once again i think i'm gonna just uh, use the uh, brush tool and uh, decrease the softness and the strength to around 50 percent and brush it in myself just a little bit here and a little bit more there a bit stronger and then there again and just a little bit on the side and I don't think I'm gonna apply it anywhere else so this is before and this is after before and after I think this is a little bit more subtle and looks a bit more natural and our very last shot is of a magpie I've already done some preliminary editing just increase the um, exposure as you can see and the shadow detail so let's move it to 35 and then increase the shadow detail around 20 that will do and go back to the tools let's apply some uh, noise reduction this one was taken at ISO 6400 as well let's go with the recommended middle level and you can see the difference already before and after let's zoom in a little bit more so you can uh, actually see what's happening that's really nice we've done the noiseless let's do the super sharp and this time the medium and we're gonna go to the masking tool again and uh, brush it in manually uh, let's zoom in a little bit to 200 percent and just apply it to this part and the beak as well a little bit it's around there so this is before and this is after i think that's sufficient enough I don't want sharpness to be applied anywhere else or maybe the feet as well so let's go back to the edits and uh, masking brush and just do it here as well and let's see how that has changed so this is before and this is after I absolutely love these tools because it only takes a few minutes to really elevate the overall quality of your images and it definitely saves you heaps of time when doing post-processing. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed this little tutorial. If you want to learn about Luminanio a little bit more, you might also want to check out these videos next. Thanks again and catch you all very soon in the next one.